Well, welcome everyone. My name is David Kirkpatrick, and this is the second event of the Road to Addis series, which is organized by the ITU to build momentum towards the World Telecommunications Development Conference, which takes place in November in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Uh, I am a journalist based in New York, where it's very snowy and quite early right now. Um, I was uh, the founder of a company called Techonomy, which is all about technology's role in progress. And we are very deep believers in the importance of the ITU, the importance of connectivity. And I'm extremely pleased to be part of this event. Um, this session, which as I said, is uh, the second in a series, is specifically focusing on partnerships and partnerships for achieving more connectivity and inclusion. So how can partnerships be made more effective for advancing connectivity and achieving the SDGs? And how can partnerships in particular help us to support those who are further behind and to safeguard the investments we've already made to move toward our goals, and particularly our goals for the sustainable development goals of 2030? Um, so this session, in addition to being here on Zoom, is live streamed and will be archived and made available on the website. Um, I would also, I would right now like to invite all the speakers to turn on their video so I can introduce them to you. Um, they are, okay, I see at least Doreen is on screen and Wendy. Uh, Dor Doreen Bogdan-Martin, who you'll hear from in just a moment and is very involved in having made this all possible, is the director of the ITU Telecommunications <laughs> Development Bureau. Um, Borge Brenda, I believe is here. He was having a little connectivity difficulty, but if he is here, uh, I can't see him, but uh, he's president of the World Economic Forum. We're extremely pleased to have Borge with us. Uh, and similarly, Amadou Dafe, who's CEO and co-founder of Gabaya. We'll be hearing from all these people in some in, at length in just a minute. Wendy Mars, who is president for Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Russia at Cisco. Uh, and finally, Asanda Ojiambo, who's executive director and CEO of the UN Global Compact. So those are our speakers. Um, I would like to ask them now to turn off their cameras and uh, uh, turn them back on with your mic when it is your time to speak. And we will also bring all the speakers on again. There's Borge, hello Borge. Uh, Sorry for being late. No, it's no problem. I introduced you without your video, but we're glad to have you. Uh, but now it's time to turn your camera off because I was just going to say all the speakers should turn off their cameras. And at the end, we will hear see everybody in addition to the, the times when they speak individually. Uh, if the speakers would all turn off their cameras now, we'll, we'll get them when they are time. And then also at the end, we'll each hear um, uh, what there's a, a sort of summary session word that they're all going to give us. Um, so, uh, this session is only going to be in English, um, and throughout the session, we will have some short videos to talk about some of the great partnerships that are already underway, uh, that ITU is involved with, and well, we'll also have a poll. Uh, and in addition to all those great elements in this very dynamic program, uh, Donola Oladapo, who I'd like to introduce you to now, is going to be uh, coming and joining us periodically with her own community. So Danola, tell us about that and what you're going to be doing. Thank you so much, David. Um, I wanna encourage everyone to get involved in the conversation by tweeting live. Um, if you have any questions for any of the speakers, um, we've also invited some young people to live tweet as well. So we'll be reading some of those. The hashtags to use are Road to Addis and ITUWTDC. Over to you, David. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, yes, Danola will have her community and be monitoring it and bringing uh, excerpts from it to us throughout the next hour. Um, and uh, so now I'd like to turn the floor over to Doreen, uh, the director of the ITU Telecommunication Development Bureau, who will welcome us further. Terrific, thank you. Thank you, David, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, ITU friends and family. 
our distinguished panelists. David, if I may add, I think we also have Berlot Ba, who's the, the CEO of Orange Mali, uh, who's, who's also joined us and will be uh, intervening. So great to have you with us as well. Uh, we have our young leaders and of course, everyone joining from around the world online. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to welcome you all, as David said, to our second stop on our road to Addis. And the theme for our forthcoming World Telecommunications Development Conference is connecting the unconnected to achieve sustainable developments. The COVID pandemic has shown us all how vitally important connectivity is to supporting social and economic resilience. But connecting the 3.7 billion people still lacking from any form of online access and putting in place more accessible, affordable and meaningful connectivity for the hundreds of millions more is not something that any of us can do alone. ITU estimates that 428 billion will be required to connect remaining 3.7 billion to the internet by 2030. The enormity of the investment needed and the huge regulatory and logistical efforts required, and we saw this yesterday in our joint session with the World Bank on digital regulation, to extend networks out to where they're most needed is going to demand a colossal effort involving all stakeholders across the entire digital ecosystem and beyond. Cooperation, collaboration, and partnership must be at the very core of our efforts to boost global connectivity. We need to get creative, creative about new models, about new financing strategies, about new ways of working constructively together within and across our sectors. The good news, and yes, there is some good news, is that the global community is coming on board. And I was very heartened to see this message come through loud and clear last week at the WEF Tech, the, the Tech for Good segment of the Davos Agenda Sessions where leaders from the tech industry, from governments, and from the financial sector all echo the vital importance of cross-sector collaboration. The new partnership track at the WTDC is designed not just to engage ITU's traditional development constituencies, but to expand our reach, bringing a host of new players and providing all stakeholders with the place to forge the alliances and make the deals that will make concrete our shared commitment to bridge the digital divide. And that's why as we prepare for the WTDC, I want us to use this session to really rethink, rethink our approaches to partnerships as well as their role in accelerating connectivity for sustainable development. We have an amazing group of expert panelists joining us as well as our energized community of young leaders. So I anticipate some very innovative ideas emerging from this session. Our spirit of partnership is part of our DNA at the ITU, and we've worked collaboratively with the private sector for over 150 years. And last year alone, our development sector forged 42 new partnerships that represent yearly commitments of almost $15 million. This is a big achievement. It spans core development issues, ranging from digital inclusion, innovation, youth empowerment, gender equality, digital skills, and the digital transformation of government services. Key new partnerships include partnership dialogue for connectivity, our Connect to Recover effort, the ITU Giga school connectivity effort that we're running with UNICEF, the Broadband Commission's working group on 21st century financing, and the WEF Edison platform, as well as the UN Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation. These represent a great start, but we need to go further and find ways to engage new players and new communities to really create a more connected, resilient, prosperous, inclusive, and sustainable world for all. So with that, David, let's get started. Over to you. Thank you, Doreen. Um, Great, great beginning. Um, so now we're going to have a quick poll to find out what you all are thinking about partnerships and, and particularly partnerships that help us move the world towards greater connectivity, which as we all know, and as Doreen just emphasized, is such an urgent challenge for the world. So the question for the poll is, what is the most important ingredient for a successful partnership? Um, you should all see the poll now. Um, okay, there it is. And the choices are 
shared values and objectives, trust, a clear plan, or agreed performance metrics. Please pick one of those and quickly we'll just see which of these four all very important points is the most important uh, in, in your opinion, uh, you people from all over the world who are gathered here right now. So we'll give you just a minute to uh, answer those that question. It shouldn't take you long. Um, please do do that. And then if the uh, if the if someone will please put the results up as soon as we have them. And while we're waiting for that, I will mention we are really glad, as Doreen mentioned, to have Mr. Berlot Ba, who's the CEO of Orange Mali, who will be joining us um, a little later in the program. And my apologies that he was not on my initial list. Uh, very happy that he's joined us last minute. We will be very eager to hear from him. Okay, are the results of the poll available? There they are. Okay, well, that's pretty clear. A lot of all these things are important, but shared values and objectives are the is the one thing that you all agree, um, or or the majority of you believe is the most important. So, uh, keeping that in mind, we'll we'll move forward. That's a really valuable insight. Uh, okay, I'd like to bring now on Sanda Ojiambo. Please turn on your video. Uh, as I mentioned before, Sanda is the executive director and CEO of the UN Global Compact. Boy, though, there's an organization that really symbolizes the importance of partnerships, one of the most important partnerships there is, in my opinion. So, Sanda, in, in that important role, you experience every day firsthand how important partnerships are. So, Let's just reverse that for a second. And if we didn't have strong partnerships, how bad a problem would that be? And in particular, what would it mean for our ability to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030? Thank you, David. Um, and greetings, you know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who are gathered here today. You know, David, the, the question is one that begs a lot of reflection. Um, I think that partnerships or the absence thereof will certainly be a very big risk, particularly given the way that the SDGs were designed, developed and articulated. You know, I see partnerships, you know, SDG 17 as almost the connective tissue that links the, the agenda for the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. And we're firmly convinced that without global partnerships, including partnerships that, that bring into the fore the private sector, our sustainable and connected vision of the world would be truly unattainable. And if I look specifically at connectivity, I think we would definitely fall short on the delivery of the SDGs. And the gaps would widen, not just the digital divide gaps, but all sorts of divides would, would widen as, as for sure. You know, I reflect on the last year and one of the greatest lessons I think the pandemic has taught us is how being connected to the internet and to connectivity can really be the difference as to whether an individual has access to employment, to education, to health, to information, and the possibility of collect, connecting with loved ones. And it was also amazing to watch how quickly families, institutions, sectors of business, and even governments adopted to digital ways of working or virtual ways of working or expanded the ways in which they work virtually. And the truth is, I think, powered by connectivity, partnerships, both usual and unusual, you know, for financing, for access, have truly been the, the bedrock of this platform does it ex, that has expanded health, education, financial inclusion, supply chain management, e-commerce, and very many other development uh, areas. So, you know, to answer your question in short, you know, the absence of partnerships would truly impact, um, you know, the attainment of the sustainable development goals. I think the challenge ahead really lies for us to, to ensure that, as the poll demonstrated, certainly that partnerships have shared goals and objectives, but I think we also need to look at the right kinds of partnerships so that in the context of connectivity, last mile connectivity, access, affordability, uh, content, um, you know, uh, uh, what will really make the difference to individuals, to, to families and to organizations. And I just wanna cite one example where we can see the adverse outcomes of this. And I just wanna pick education because I think it's one that impacts all of us. In the last year, the ILO has estimated that you know, about 463 million children, you know, experience no education, lack of remote learning, and 24 million of those are likely to fall into child labor at this point in time. 
And this is simply due to the fact that they didn't have access to connectivity, then the right partnerships aren't necessarily in place yet. The challenge for us all is immense and we all need to step to the table and deliver this partnership model that I think you know, Doreen spoke about that is innovative, that is fast moving and cuts across many sectors. So we do need to bear in mind that partnerships are critical. I think the challenges of our time and indeed the time for going forward is really how we can look at partnerships unusual and look at ways in which partnerships can unleash um, you know, benefits across sectors, across industries, across geographies, and certainly demographics. Very important for the sustainable development goals. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanda. Um, <clears throat> and it is really important to re be reminded that the 17th goal is partnerships for the goals. Uh, that is really what we're here talking about. So thank you for underscoring that. Um, now we're gonna see uh, our first video in just a second. And the video is about GIGA, a high impact partnership spearheaded by the ITU and UNICEF, which aims to connect all the schools of the world to the internet by 2030. So let's see that video now. How many schools are there in the world? Where are they located? How many are connected to the internet? Well, the truth is, we don't know it. Yet, GIGA, the innovative partnership between ITU and UNICEF, is set to answer these questions. Launched in 2019, GIGA has so far mapped 800,000 schools in 30 countries and is now actively working with 14 governments to ensure that every child is equipped with the digital public goods they need and empowered to shape the future they want. GIGA helps countries map schools and their connectivity, create investment opportunities, identify the most appropriate technologies and high quality vetted and safe content. GIGA is bringing innovation to education and has been highlighted as one of the key recommendations towards digital transformation in the UN Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation. Connecting all schools of the world to the internet is an ambitious but necessary undertaking. The time to act is now. Partner with GIGA and help us provide every young person with access to information, opportunity and choice. Wow, that was a powerful short video. We think, we think, oh, well, of course, we'll connect the schools of the world. Well, first we have to figure out where they all are and what they all are. That just goes to show the scale of the challenges we face, but we are here to help really build momentum to solving them. Um, now I'd like to bring in our next speaker, uh, Mr. Amadou Dafe, who's the CEO and co-founder of Gabaya. Um, which is a company that builds the tech talent pool in Africa. And, and Amadou, uh, through your company, you're, you're working on building a globally competitive African tech talent pool. Um, and obviously, connectivity is critical to make that work. And we're, 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 you're going to be deeply reliant and, and your community will be deeply reliant on a strong internet. So what kind of partnerships would you like to see happen in order to and, and be established to, to guarantee steady and affordable internet connectivity for freelancers in Africa and the community that you work with? Thanks for being here. Uh, all right, good morning and uh, from Addis Ababa, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of time that the continent would be filled with gig platforms, right? This thing about gig economy is gonna go, in my opinion, very, very sort of exponentially in terms of growth in the next few years in Africa, just because the concept of gig is already existing, very existing in Africa. In most cities, you see a lot of young people, you know, hustling to sell in the streets and, you know, pretty much trying to make a living. But now if you add digital to it, you have more opportunities, right? In some of the African countries, you see a lot of the logistic companies allowing people to get into you know, car delivery services or motorbike delivery services, but they all use something in common, which is a mobile app that allows them to connect with customers, knowing where they're going, having some GPS location and so on and so forth. 
And further out, if you look at it in a high level, which is more where we play with the freelance marketplace, where it's more of selling your tech skills to clients who are across the globe. So there's no doubt that if we really want to see this freelance and gig economy sort of, uh, you know, really grow exponentially in Africa, we need to look at connectivity. You know, some of the few partnerships, of course, that we rely on, the first thing is NNS service providers. These can be anywhere from telco companies to small people who piggyback on telcos. So having an ecosystem of partnership between telcos and any service provider and company like ours, or even freelancers themselves, allow them, allow them to have, you know, packages of internet that's affordable, that works well, you know, beyond the one make that they get. All of that stuff would contribute very quickly to the development of this particular industry that just taken the whole world by storm, right? When COVID came, everybody worked remotely, right? So this is a new habit that's just gonna continue to happen without connectivity, uh, affordable and steady connectivity in Africa is practically impossible. So I implore also the telecommunication company to look at how can we sort of empower these, this industry by allowing these you know, free, free gig workers and freelancers to all sort of have the right tools. And the tool here is the internet at the center. Well, thank you so much, Amadou. Great to see you. Um, many of us on, on, in this group look forward to coming to your wonderful country uh, later this year. So um, let's check in with Danola, uh, see what she's getting from her community and whether there might be any questions for the speakers or other interactions that they've, that they've uh, come up with. So hi, Danola, I'm gonna turn off my video. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Yes, the tweets are coming in. Please keep them coming. Um, there's a tweet that says, with everything going on in the world right now, partnerships have never been more crucial in achieving the sustainable development goals. Um, hashtag um, ITWTDC and Road to Addis. And we also have a question. I believe this is one of the young people from the um, Generation Connect community. She's asking Doreen, actually, um, the BDT director, what kind of partnerships do you want to see coming out of WTDC 21? Hashtag Rota Addis, hashtag ITWTDC. So over to you, Dari. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Donola. Well, maybe just to pick up on what Sanda was saying, you know, SDG 17 uh, and partnerships being the connective tissue. Um, I mean, I would say, I guess, first of all, what, what I would like to see is action oriented partnerships. I think we have to be looking to translate good intentions into concrete actions. I wanna see resilient and adaptive partnerships. I think with, with COVID, we've seen uh, how we need to be actively adapting and evolving our strategies to deliver on their promises. And of course, thirdly, and, and we've heard this uh, already on this session, inclusive partnerships. So this means that partnerships need to actively address the connectivity needs of those on the ground, including minorities, persons of disabilities, maybe refugees, displaced persons, women, indigenous, marginalized. I think it's only when we tap into that inclusive piece, only then will we really be able to speak of, of universal connectivity. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering that question. Please keep the questions coming in using the hashtags um, Road to Addis and ITWTDC. Great, thank you, Danola, and thank you, Doreen. Uh, and now I'd like to invite uh, Borge to come join us. Uh, Borge, as I mentioned before, is president of the World Economic Forum. He's been very busy the last few weeks and probably all the last year, he's always busy. But uh, I wanted to congratulate you, Borge, uh, for a very successful Davos agenda session last week. Very different from Davos years in the past, but one that had a lot of impact with a bunch of fantastic uh, ideas and, and emergent uh, programs and plans and partnerships and all kinds of things. Uh, I wanted to particularly note what Secretary General uh, Guterres said at, at your sessions. He urged a reinvigorated and inclusive and networked multilateralism. And he said that we need a new social contract where quality education and digital technology act as the two great enablers and equalizers. Couldn't agree with him more on that. Great to hear the UN Secretary General saying things like that. So Borge, you've spent so many years working in public and international organizations and you're president of the forum. So 
which is obviously one of the most, if not the most successful organization building a multi-stakeholder partnerships to tackle the, the world's biggest problems. So from your standpoint and your experience, what are some examples of innovative approaches to partnerships that you've seen for digital transformation? Well, thank you, uh, David. Also, thank you for your very kind and inspiring words. We did run our Davos meeting um, last week for the first time in 51 years uh, digitally. And um, it uh, also surprisingly uh, was able to create some of the same Davos feeling as up in the mountains. Uh, but for those that uh, think that there is less work with the digital meeting, I think ITU and you, David, know that it takes a lot to bring people together also uh, digitally. And thank you to ITU for your leadership and also to bringing all us uh, together today. On the importance of partnerships and partnerships that have been uh, consequential, let me put it into context. The world governments have launched now a stimulus package of 12 trillion US dollars. Never have we stimulated economies like this after the Second World War. This is to build a bridge uh, between uh, a situation where there is almost nothing happening in their economies and to a post COVID world where we hopefully will be back. But when we have used 12 trillion US dollars, there is not that many fiscal muscles back with the governments after uh, post-COVID. Of course, there are muscles, but we need to also then mobilize private sector. We, we cannot reach the sustainable development goals or, re or, or break the digital uh, divide that we see uh, today, the impasse uh, we are facing without mobilizing the private sector. That is the business models, but also additional resources and so much is at stake. The digital divide today, uh, 3.6 billion people as previously mentioned, not being connected to the internet gives them zero opportunities to leapfrog. What we need now is a lot of leapfrogging and the internet access to the web gives also access to uh, great teachers, uh, to great knowledge, and if we are going to succeed, we need to break this, ver this impasse extremely fast. So we have taken at the World Economic Forum some initiatives, but we also get a lot of credit to other organizations. With ITU, we have developed and World Bank and private sector, we developed an action plan that Colombia, for example, the country of Colombia, have now implemented almost um, uh, all together uh, on making sure that we address uh, and introduce the right policies uh, also to end the um, digital divide. We're also, as mentioned uh, during Davos Agenda Week, we launched the Edison Alliance, an alliance of companies, governments, civil society, to make sure that we all mobilize together with the UN, together with all the other organization, a real, real rolling up the sleeves, not uh, moving around deck chairs on Titanic initiative, on making sure that all children in the world should be connected to the web. And this we can only do if we do it multi-stakeholder. Multi Thank you. Thank you, Borge. Thank you for the urgency of, of, that you're expressing. And obviously your point about the children of the world is so central. So thank you for making that as well. So next, um, before we hear from Wendy Mars of Cisco, we're gonna show a short video about the Digital Transformation Centers Initiative, which is a high impact partnership between the ITU and Cisco to equip people with the skills needed to effectively participate in today's digital society and economy. So let's see that video. Is it possible to go from never having touched a computer to successfully running a digital business within a year? Well, the answer is yes. The Digital Transformation Centers Initiative is helping citizens in underserved communities achieve this goal. ITU in partnership with Cisco, supports countries in strengthening the digital skills of their citizens, especially those who are traditionally excluded from the digital economy. Launched in 2019, 
The initiative in its pilot phase is working with nine countries in Africa, the Americas and Asia Pacific. The first phase will run until the end of September 2021 and then an open call will be made for more potential Digital Transformation Centres or DTCs to join the network. The training has helped me to get more customers. For me, the internet aspect was beneficial. Building digital skills, as well as guaranteeing digital inclusion and the scaling up of DTCs, can only be reached through value-added multi-stakeholder partnerships. Partner with us. Join the DTC initiative. Help us empower the unconnected. Help us provide them with a path out of poverty and help us build a more inclusive digital society. Well, that's a great introduction to our conversation with Wendy Mars, who, as I mentioned before, is president of Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Russia at Cisco. Cisco is one, not only one of the largest and most successful tech companies in the world, but also one which has inclusion entrenched in the core of its DNA, probably partly because it's a much more mature tech company than some of the other ones we could discuss. Uh, Cisco understands from long experience how important inclusion is. Uh, last year, Cisco was working under the tagline, powering an inclusive future for all. And Cisco's many times appealed to the tech and other leaders of the world to direct our energy towards creating solutions that move the world toward global inclusion. And in fact, the next stop on this Road to Addis series will focus on inclusion. So Wendy, how do you think we should be thinking about partnerships in regard to inclusion and how they should be developed and implemented with inclusiveness as a central goal? Thank you, David. And it's wonderful to be here with all of you today. You know, if I just take a step back for a moment, the World Economic Forum Global Risk Report last week actually highlighted digital inequality as a critical threat to the world over the next two years. And this pandemic has shown us really that what can be digital truly must be digital. We've seen it in our daily lives in doing things online right now that we never used to before, be that having a doctor's appointment over video, shopping um, online, meeting friends and family over video environments. We have a critical dependency on connectivity, but actually between a half, uh, sorry, between a third and a half of the world's population does not have internet access today. And some countries are better served than others. We know that rural connectivity still is a challenge and also some generations are more challenged than others with connectivity and the use of technology. So the World Economic Forum is right. Digital inequality truly is a critical threat to the world. Now, people need access to technology, but they also need the skills in order to be able to use it. And the Network Academy program uh, that we've worked on within Cisco, leveraging very strong partnerships help th helps with this. We focused on this program for many years. And this actually is something we do in partnership with educational establishments in order to get the courses to provide to train people within digital skills and capabilities. And since we started this program, we've actually trained 12 million students across the world. And those are from both emerging and developing economies uh, within the world and people from many, many different backgrounds, which is fantastic to see. Now in 2020 alone, we've actually trained 2.3 million students. And we've had to of course switch that training and education from in room to remote pretty much overnight with the pandemic. So retraining 11,000 teachers, being able to deliver content virtually and leveraging video platforms, WebEx in this situation. And of course, once the pandemic is over, I expect this will continue in a hybrid form. So leveraging both video and also in person. But women continue to be underrepresented if we look at these environments. 
So right now today, only a quarter of the attendees and of the students that have trained have been women. And in particular, there is a challenge within the age range of 16 to 25, where there's a particular problem there. So in the coming months, we will continue to be working on this and you'll see some focused initiatives that we'll be launching together with partners in order to try and improve this situation. So you really see partnership is critical to success here. Now you just saw the video um, before in regard to one of the projects that we've been working on with the ITU. And that's in partnership with national and partnership with national governments. So in November, and Doreen, who's on the panel today with us, Doreen was there as well. We launched the Ghana Center um, in Accra, where students can actually learn digital skills, which will be so important in these coming years. And that's a partnership between us at Cisco, the ITU, the government of Ghana, and the Norwegian International Aid Ministry. And we now have seven of these digital transformation centers up and running around the world and another two that are gonna be coming online soon. So that's fantastic progress. But you know, it's not just individuals that we can help through partnerships, it's actually countries too. And through our country digital acceleration program, we can also help at the national level. Businesses also suffer if they don't have good connectivity. So as an example, Cisco has deployed edge centers in Kenya and also in South Africa, which really help small to medium enterprises and also micro businesses, providing them with connectivity, access to video conferencing, demo space, and access to digital skills, such as those Network Academy students. So for me, digital inclusion is a vital issue and one which we can only solve through creative and imaginative partnerships with organizations of all type. And this way truly we can strive towards an inclusive future for all. Back to you, David. Thanks so much, Wendy. And it, it is really true. Cisco has been doing really important work on bringing a larger community into the digital world for many decades. So thank you to Cisco for that. And thank you to Wendy for being here. Uh, okay, we're gonna see another video now. Um, this video is gonna talk about the Broadband Commission, which is a high impact multi-stakeholder partnership that promotes the power of ICTs and broadband technologies for achieving the sustainable development goals. So let's look at the video. Time is running out. With just 10 years to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the Broadband Commission is embarking on a last urgent push to leverage the power of digital to meet the 2030 agenda and connect the other half of the world's population through broadband. Founded in 2010 by ITU, UNESCO, President Paul Kagame and Carlos Slim, the Broadband Commission is a public-private partnership of over 50 world leaders from the ICT sector focused on universal connectivity. It seeks to boost broadband in the international policy agenda and expand access across the world. By engaging in partnerships between international organizations, the private sector, governments and civil society, commissioners tackle a wide range of pressing issues from digital health and education to child online safety, digital entrepreneurship, the digital gender divide, the special needs of vulnerable countries, and more. The advocacy work of the commissioners has enabled to increase the number of countries with access to broadband plans by over 60% worldwide in the last decade. A decade of action has begun. A decade where ICTs will continue to make the world safer, stronger, and more connected. Today, we invite you to build back better with broadband and join us in our cause of accelerating the development of a digital society and to ensure that we leave no one offline. All right, uh, another important piece of Building, building our momentum toward understanding the, the many sides of this issue, that, that commission is so important. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Brelot Ba, 
who is CEO of Orange, Mali. Uh, we're very happy that he has been able to join us uh, at the last minute, and we're really eager to hear what he has to say. So, so, so Mr. Ba, um, when you look at your own experience in the telecom sector, what do you think the right kind of partnerships are that are needed for, for the financing and creative new kinds of financing to get us to more affordable and universal connectivity? And thank you again for being here. Uh, hi, David. Um, thank you for your question. I think that um, building partnership is just crucial, uh, especially when it comes to delivering affordable solutions. Uh, because in our digital and uh, um, connectivity industry, um, lowering costs means economy of scales, large volumes. And the good news is that um, we have these volumes, as mentioned before, 3.7 billion on that connected to uh, the internet and in Africa, according to the last GSMA report, 800 million um, Africans don't have uh, access to internet even though 500 million are covered by broadband networks. So it means that it's just not a, a matter of, of connectivity. So the potential for inclusion, um, including um, people are there. And also according to the, to the same uh, report, um, the average usage per um, customer will um, move from 1.7 gigabyte per month uh, to seven gigabyte per month by 2025. And every year, um, uh, 40 million um, are uh, joining the internet com connect, um, uh, community for the first time. So the volumes are there and the partnerships should address these volumes, try to uh, make sure that we can uh, come with uh, solutions that can um, um, allow the big numbers to be connected and by that uh, lowering costs and having uh, more affordable solutions. And I will, um, just mentioned three categories of this uh, partnership. The first is um, better working, working together, as mentioned by um, Darren. In the countries, um, uh, it's very rare that you will see in the beginning of the year, the government regulator operators sitting around a table and then sharing their uh, uh, priorities in terms of deployment, uh, be it for uh, like uh, fiber optic, or um, access uh, and discussing um, how their infrastructures, infrastructures should be um, better mutualized, um, allow not everyone to do the same. And this is really crucial because it means having efficiency in terms of deployment. This is um, an area where new um, mindset should really be at stake. The second area is um, um, universal access, because it's also very rare to see in a country um, the regulator, the, uh, the government and operators having kind of uh, reverse actions to award uh, the uh, non-profitable areas to uh, operators that are existing and that have the low cost. Uh, most of the time, we will see a newcomer with fixed costs, etc., and this is really uh, a way where we can um, um, innovate and make sure that all the deployments will be cost effective. And the third is uh, area where new partners with these existing uh, actors uh, can really uh, bring something new is the frequency. The all the studies and the last report uh, as well, JSMA uh, showed that we have a. A multiplying, a multiplying factor of uh, 10 between um, providing data in, for instance, 2G networks and uh, 40 networks. So uh, a new approach, including operators and governments in terms of um, neutral uh, frequencies, uh, neutral technological frequencies can be uh, developed to make sure that all the operators will um, um, always choose the best technology to um, maximize the, um, the output of frequencies. And uh, when I say coming from one uh, to 10 between 2G and 4G, it means reducing the cost uh, from a factor of 10. So all these actors can really have a, a different approach. The second um, partnership that I would like to mention is um, Pan-African or um, it can also be worldwide to come with low cost smartphones. 
Uh, it means having a 4G device, or for instance, less than 20 uh, US dollars. We, you can have initiatives in this or that country, but nothing addressing the potential of millions and millions of uh, um, Africans that are not connected. I'm talking about 50 million, 100 million. Uh, and this uh, um, partnership can be an African and um, aiming at having in one location, big facilities that will um, allow to have these volumes. And the last uh, partnership that I would like to, um, to, to mention here is uh, uh, another one that should be global. Um, COVID-19 has shown that it is really pointless to build a school if people cannot access to remote education. It's also uh, pointless to have uh, big agencies, aid energy agencies, where when people cannot uh, uh, access to them and are obliged to pay remotely. So here, the idea is a global partnership between all the um, technical and financial um, actors involved in the 17 sustainable development goals to make sure that in every project, when we invest 100, at least five or 10 or 15 are really dedicated to digital. And uh, when I uh, come back to the example of the school, it means that I will build uh, buildings, facilities, but at the same time, a five or 10% of the budget will be allowed uh, to digital to make sure that we have digital content, remote access to this content, and this will uh, allow to have in each category kind of um, usage in education, health, and this uh, usage increasing will really um, uh, allow us to grab the volumes and then reduce costs. So um, these are the three types of uh, partnership that can uh, really be developed to we make sure that these millions of uh, um, unconnected can access to uh, different services. Thank you. Well, thank you. That your, your point that we really can't have an economy if there isn't a digital part of it. As, and as you said, in, in the schools in Africa and everywhere, it is just not feasible anymore to Absolutely. not be connected. So thank you for underscoring that point. Um, you know, for the first time in history, WTDC 21 in Addis Ababa will be preceded by a youth summit. And Africa, the world's youngest continent, which is something that Mr. Ba was just talking about, uh, it has almost 60% of its population under the age of 25. ITU's facts and figures report of, for 2020 tells us that in the areas of Africa where there is connectivity, 40% of young people are using the internet. That is extremely encouraging, um, especially if we think about how fast growing is the youth demographic and how critical connectivity is gonna to be to achieving the sustainable development goals. So as we've heard earlier online with us right now is a large group of young leaders who are ready to walk the path to Road to Addis with us. Uh, Danola Oladapo, our youth leader, uh, is here with us again to tell us what that group is, is saying and, and what, Danola, let me ask you, what, what does the group think are the ingredients for creating partnerships that attract and engage youth, uh, especially around digital transformation? We've been getting really interesting tweets. Um, hopefully I'll be able to kind of go through them later, but from my perspective, um, I think it's really about just building trust in a really authentic way, especially around common goals that young people across the world are so passionate about, you know, issues such as climate change, inclusion, equality, and global health. I think it's about creating real opportunities and platforms for youth to use their voices, take action, and really have a real impact on the world. Thanks, Danola. So I'd like to ask Doreen for her response to that. Um, what do you think? How do we get the young people involved more? Yeah, th thanks, David. I mean, I think the pressure's on us, right? Future generations will judge us. And so really as leaders of the organizations working on the issues uh, you care deeply about, we need not only to give you a platform 
uh, and opportunities to engage, but we also need to actively listen to your ideas, to be open-minded and to embrace your eagerness. Uh, I think we need to be providing concrete pathways so that you can actually be part of our action plan. And I guess I'd, I'd like to say that for all the young people that are, that are following today, this session, uh, if it's inspired you and you wanna be part of a global movement to connect the unconnected, reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our Generation Connect website. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Um, okay, now, we're gonna do something fun. I want all the speakers to turn on their video just for a second here. And uh, we, I wanna ask you all in one word, what would you like to see coming out of WTDC? So I'm gonna ask you one by one to just tell us your word and we're gonna illustrate this again in, in, a, little, in a minute. But let me start with you, uh, Mr. Ba, uh, what, what one thing would you like to see come out of WTDC in one word? Um, commitment. Commitment. That's a nice one. Okay. Uh, or, when, or I would choose at this one if you made it disruption. Disruption. Okay. Disruption is good too. Disruptive commitment. How about that? But disruption is good. Wendy. Education. Beautiful. Sanda. Action. Thank you. Borgay. Impact. Beautiful. Danola. I want to say transformation, but before this, we reached out to about 50 young people, and the most popular word that came out was innovation. <laughs> That's a good one. And Doreen. Mm, all the ones I was going to say were taken. <laughs> so I'm going to say sustainability. Okay, beautiful. Um, so, um, hold on a second. So Doreen, I'm going to, let's, let's ask the speakers all to turn off their videos now, except for Doreen. Um, and, and Doreen, just tell us what we've heard today. Give us a summary of, of what we've done and where we're headed from here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. And it, it's really been a, a great discussion. We've heard um, lots of important contributions on, on if there's an absence of partnerships, how that would impact uh, achieving the SDGs, how the gig economy will quickly take over the continent of Africa. Uh, and so we need that right ecosystem in place. We need that, that talent development as well. Um, that the digital divide can only be closed by mobilizing the private sector. Uh, we need a lot of leapfrogging now to be able to close that digital divide. Um, the importance of not just access here, it's not just a connectivity issue, but also skills. Uh, that's absolutely critical. Um, it, it, it's been amazing, David. And I really want to thank our incredible speakers, Borgay, Amadou, Berlot, Wendy, Sanda, uh, thank you so much for your engagement, your commitment to the vision of universal affordable connectivity and digitally led progress towards the SDGs. Of course, I want to thank through you, Danola, our inspiring young leaders. I think your engagement is also a big part of our efforts to solve the global connectivity challenge. And I'm glad that, that through these sessions, we're able to give you a, at least a small space to share your, your reflections and your ideas. Uh, because without your involvement, we won't succeed in, in implementing the change we, we, we need to see. Um, I would also like us to take inspiration from the UNSG's address uh, at the Davos agenda last week, and David, you referred to this, when he confirmed his belief that digital technologies are the core enabler of a new social contract, uh, universal access to ICTs can help us to rapidly recoup much of the ground that we've lost as a result of the pandemic. And it can also help to set us up on a path, a path towards a brighter, more resilient future, I would say. And of course, our partner to connect track at the WTDC is really looking to escalate and to expand our ambition to bring everyone everywhere into the digital world. And we saw a posting uh, by Arthur, and I think that was your point. It's not about individual goals. It's about this shared common goal and, and vision. I think the challenge may be immense, 
but the opportunity is even greater. And we need to think innovatively. We need to be willing to experiment and open to learn. And we really need that, that clear, strong vision like our panelists have that, that they shared with us today that translates into lasting and scalable change. And most importantly, we all need to work together. With just nine months to go to the WTBC, I call on the global community, step up to the plate. Step up to the plate and start working now on concrete and collaborative commitments that we can bring to that landmark conference. ITU stands ready to help you in any way that we can by connecting you with the players working in this space, uh, sharing regulatory and policy guidance, showcasing your projects and initiatives on the stage at WTBC. Because David, from crisis comes change. Uh, we can all be part of that change, but we need to act fast. And the concrete pledges and commitments we make in Addis can really help to usher a brave new world of opportunity and prosperity. So let me echo the words of, of Jesse and Gray, who was our youth secretary general last year or the year before uh, at ITU's first Global Young Leaders Summit. She said, do you dare to? Do you have the vision, the energy and the drive to be an agent of change and work with us to connect the world? I know many of you do, and I really look forward immensely to working with all of you to be the change that we all want to see. Thank you, David. Thanks so much, Doreen. And with my apologies for uh, succumbing to some of the inevitable hiccups of the Zoom conference era, I'd like to bring Amadou on for his word, and I apologize for not seeing him on the screen before. So Amadou, <laughs> welcome back. What's your word? Exponentiality. Oh, wow, good I word. Know. I know, <laughs> All right, I, I love it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Amadou. Now, um, I would like now to uh, bring on Jim Rogers, um, who we met at the beginning. Jim is has been throughout this entire session drawing a, uh, a Im image uh, illustrating the entire conversation. Uh, so Jim, can you join us and show us what you've been coming up with? Hi, uh, yes, I'd just like to share now. I'll wait for a second, I'll just share my screen. Okay. Uh, this is my illustration. Wow. It's amazing how fast you can do that. <laughs> Beautiful. That, now that will be shared online. Everyone will have access to that afterwards. Help us remember what we've heard. What would you say is the thing that jumps out at you most in, in producing this, Jim? I think, uh, well, there's a lot of key themes. I think uh, connecting the unconnected is a big one and making sure everyone can go digital. I, I thought a, a really important thing that Wendy said was what can be digital must be digital. So I, I think there's a lot of good themes here and it's, uh, it's, it's good to see it's moving forward. Well, thanks. And thanks for being part of it. Um, and and your, thank you. your images of the people are amazingly good. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, now let's, let's see the word cloud that was created as a result of all the words we heard from the, the speakers. Can we get the word cloud up? Another illustration of what we've done today. In a way, Jim just gave us one form of word cloud, a bigger word cloud, but we, we've been building this word cloud uh, beginning with the first session and, and we'll add to it today and continue building it until we finish the Road to Addis series. Okay, so here are our words. Disruption, innovation, exponentiality, impact. Impact is a big word. Sustainability, transformation, connectivity, commitment. Uh, wow, all those things are necessary. So good to see it all together. And as I said, we will continue building a master word cloud for the entire Road to Addis series that we'll share later in the year after we've had the entire series of meetings. Um, so uh, this wraps our meeting today. Uh, I wanna thank everyone and particularly Doreen and the ITU for all the amazing work they did to make it happen. Um, we will have another Road to Addis session 
on the on the 16th of March on the, with a focus on digital inclusion. So we really look forward to seeing you there. And thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.